Hello, Nikki and Thomasina and other members of the committee, Office of Teaching and Learning. This is my Thomas Keyes Teacher Scholar Report uh, for attendance at the uh, Teacher Scholar Institute uh, Summer Pedagogy Track Institute 2016. Now, I wanted to share this report through this medium because I, a part of my objective was to create a more effective sensory uh, learning activities for my students in my uh, THEA 110 theater appreciation online course. And I also feel that this is a great way of showing you side by side some of the improvements that have been put into the course uh, because of the work that I did at the Institute. So the changes that I hoped to uh, uh, implement included improving the course design overall, uh, migrating to open educational uh, open education resources and leveraging the training that I received uh, in creating screencast videos and other um, audiovisual uh, materials at Bridgewater TTC. Uh, this gives me a chance to refocus the course to a great degree, develop new learning activities, uh, reframe my syllabus and concentrate uh, more on the effective and sensory domains of Bloom's taxonomy. So let's have a look at how some of that might have taken place. Uh, first of all, I want to take you back in time to the original course design. This is um, theater appreciation back in uh, spring of 2015, which was one of the more recent times that I taught it before the Pedagogy Institute. Uh, you can see the layout. This is the course information segment, which has been completely revised in the new course. Uh, you can see there's a lot of text on this page. Um, things are sort of uh, a little all over the place. The new segment has a lot of, uh, I think, big improvements. For one thing, uh, there is a welcome video. Uh, that's actually a professionally produced video that I had put together gives the students an idea who I am, what my background is, and what I think is important about the course. Uh, the, syllabus, the syllabus document uh, has been revised. It's also in a different layout. So I just uh, let me point out the layout differences now. Each of these documents is streamlined. They're PDFs that are downloadable. You click on them, and they open in a window in uh, Blackboard. You can print it, you can download it, etc. Um, I'm going to take you through the syllabus in just a second, um, but just in terms of creating a, a more accessible, uh, visually streamlined um, layout for the first impression of the course, uh, you can see that this segment now contains course schedule, discussion criteria, uh, added a discussion rubric to this section as well, um, discussion board instructions and the academic integrity policy. So digging into the details here, um, opening up this syllabus and having a look at it, uh, there's a new required tool section which has been completely rewritten. The learning outcomes now have a chart that includes the outcomes and the methods of assessment for each outcome. Um, there is a fully articulated uh, protocol for online attendance. Uh, now students are required to attend uh, a specific number of days per week and for a specific uh, a minimum length of time, although they can choose what time of day they want to or night they want to uh, do that time um, and to some extent what days of the week they want to do that based on some of the deadlines. All of that is articulated in this and it's also included the Disability Resources uh, Achievement Center link. A uh, clearly articulated missing and late assignment segment is also now there as well as a new means of evaluation segment the weighting of the grade structures there, and that is the new syllabus. 
which will be submitted to you. So uh, I can uh, sort of draw your attention here to uh, the fact that the toolbar itself has been redesigned. So here is the old layout of the toolbar. Uh, there's just a home page link, syllabus, course schedule, the course documents, blah, 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 blah. Now uh, we have the home page and a, a link directly to the announcements, course information. The syllabus is broken out with a separate link. Uh, course documents, if they want to get to all of them at once, or they can go module by module directly in, also into the discussions, also a course messages button. So this module one introductory module is a brand new unit that I created uh, through my work at the Institute, uh, highlighting right at the beginning, module one orientation screencast video. It's only four minutes long, but it takes students step by step through every single thing they need to do in module one. Uh, note. Uh, also, for accessibility and time management, all the videos now have a link in the title. Also, every module now has a module at a glance document, which includes the overview, a list of the learning activities in the order that they are to be completed, as well as learning objectives for that specific unit. Uh, the reading little different than before. In this case, it's just the syllabus and the course documents, but uh, coming up, I will introduce you to some of the online, uh, free online learning, uh, free online text resources that I put in to play. Um, a introductory discussion going over some of the things that people have already seen in the theater and looking for connections to other students and what they've seen in the theater to see if we can create a dialogue and references throughout the course about, oh, well, I know so-and-so have seen this, I know so-and-so have seen that show, I've also seen that show, so that they have points of reference to discuss. A new feature of the class as well, the daily journal. This is an ongoing daily assignment. Every time students log in, they need to write their goals for the session, their thoughts, basically two sentences it's a way of signing in to the attendance, as it were, as well as hopefully in that couple of minutes, focusing themselves on what they want to do during their session. That's in every module, every day, every module. The assessments in the introductory unit are also brand new and includes a syllabus quiz that covers all the course information documents. It also covers the assignments. Uh, in module one, uh, so they can get a sense of some of the ongoing assignments like the daily journal, the play attendance assignment. And then there is your expectations, which is a short answer survey about what the students' expectations are, what kind of experiences they have in online learning, uh, whether they feel comfortable uh, with this form of study, dealing with theater, reassuring them that they don't need to have any background in theater in order to be successful in this course, etc. All packed into that uh, your expectation survey. Gives me an idea of uh, that I can refer to throughout the course as to what a, ba a student's background is uh, as we go forward. And then there's a play attendance assignment which was in the former course uh, but laid out a little bit differently. So we're going to move on to um, looking at the uh, transition to open education resources. Okay, and a good example of that. So if we looked in the previous course, you would see that the previous course would have reading assignments. That included a textbook in the new, and this was a textbook that they needed to purchase. In the new course, for example, you also have another new module, uh, brand new again, created 
uh, inspired by the work at the Institute. This is uh, a unit on non-Western Asian theater. Again, this unit begins with an orientation video taking the students through step-by-step step what they need to do. Module at a glance as well. And when we get into reading and viewing, we see we are leveraging online free text. This is an online text dedicated to Asian and traditional theater and dance. The links are not large, lugubrious uh, web addresses, which is sort of uh, the new best practices is to embed those in title segments. They click on them. They read the segment. Each of these is what would be the equivalent of a few four to five pages sometimes if there's big pictures in a traditional text. Some are a little shorter than that. And it gives the students a chance to uh, work entirely online, entirely connected to the course. Uh, in addition to that, I've also uh, accessed articles that are free and available from places like the Japan Times. This is an article on Kabuki. What are the elements of Kabuki? And it leads them into a discussion, which I will be submitting the uh, prompt for, about Kabuki and traditional Kabuki as it is manifested in popular media and film. So if we take a look at that assignment, an assignment that I created after working in the Pedagogy Institute, uh, this assignment asked them to go off and find a example of a traditional Asian theater form. And I give three articles, three substantial examples in the reading, as well as multiple examples in the online text of traditional Asian theater forms. And they're going to go off and look at where those forms have been placed in films, in contemporary films. Some of them are Japanese films or Chinese films. Some of them are Western films. And there's plenty of examples listed within the articles and the reading that they can draw on. So then they post a link. They describe in a paragraph why they feel this is a, a excellent example of traditional Asian theater in a film. They look at other students' links and uh, videos. They comment on them, uh, add to that, and then they use the traditional criteria that we've established in the course for talking back and forth about what they've seen and uh, how uh, it engages them. Also in this unit is a uh, more traditional quiz that covers the reading. And that's the second new module that I created through the Institute. So now if I go to the third question that we brought forward. Uh, oh, other imp improvements that I want to cover here. Um, another improvement is in module two. Um, a 13 minute video that breaks out the different parts of the theater. So I walk the students through a traditional proscenium stage and all of the elements and that leads them to an assignment that they do on their own which is called the selfie scavenger hunt where they go into a theater and they take different pictures that represent different parts of the theater and they attach those pictures in the assignment. So that was new. Also on the back end of the course Module 7, we have a Your Expectations Fulfilled survey where they get to give feedback about the course and whether and uh, the online experience overall. I'm going to wrap this up really quick. I also tried to replicate some of the Comet Gold, which was presented to me uh, by Nikki and Thomasina in their two-person comedy show, Cleverly Designed as a Teaching Institute. Unfortunately, I only had moderate results in that direction.